So we're going to start by tuning the 3 liter hopper for the Azzy Cube 240 here. And we're going to start with what we think is roughly the optimal amount of parts for this platform. And we're going to see if we can get the minimum time for the hopper to deliver all of those parts to the Azzy Cube 240. So I'm just going to start off with a guess here and go to the software, click on this hopper vibration tab here. And I'm going to start off with a guess of maybe 250 milliseconds. I can choose to run that parameter that I just entered here, or I can run the hopper continuously, or I can just do a little test duration that I've set here. So I'm going to select or type in my 250 milliseconds, select parameter, and I'm going to test it. And that was pretty close. It got roughly what I felt was the optimal amount of parts onto this platform out of the hopper. It left a couple, but it doesn't have to be exact. So we, I think we're going to actually leave the hopper there. So we go out of the hopper vibrations now onto the platform easy tuning and what I'm going to start with is the flip move this is the move that separates all the parts from each other when they're piled up or just kind of puts them in the correct orientation if they're on the opposite side it just kind of flips them over um, so we're going to start with first of all loading all of the default parameters of this as a cube and that can be done here with this restores default parameters button Okay, so then I'm gonna make sure that center move here is selected, this is the flip. And I'm gonna enter parameter again, and I'm gonna test it at 400 milliseconds because that was the default parameters. I'm gonna see how well that works. So I'm gonna hit play. Now I'm noticing some of the parts are rocking, and that will be a detriment to our cycle time because we have to wait to take the image until parts stop rocking. Otherwise, they can maybe move into a position that the image didn't notice when it was taken. So I'm gonna switch this out really quick for an anti-roll platform. Also note, the parts here are displayed really well against the black for the camera, but they wouldn't necessarily need a black platform for training vision. Because they are opaque, you could easily use the black, the backlight to shine through the features and detect. So just because it's white doesn't mean it has to be on a black platform. Okay, so we're gonna try and test this flip one more time. Much better, no rocking this time. So I think we're gonna stick with this small anti-roll platform. So if I wanna test and tune the different platform directions now, I'll just push the parts over to one side. And if you see here on the software, this right side button is actually the side that the hopper is on. So this side is going to be my forward direction. So I'm gonna select that. And down here, I can mess with, the, again, the amplitude, the frequency, and the duration of this move. And I'm gonna start with the default parameters that it, that it loaded uh, earlier. So that was pretty good. What we want is we want to get the parts from one side of the platform to the other as fast as possible. And um, let maybe some applications, they want the parts to be gently handled so we can lower the amount of vibrations so that they're not uh, scratched or nicked or anything. Um, in this case, that seemed really good. We had a couple that didn't quite make it all the way in the three seconds that we had set. Um, so what I could do is maybe bump up the amplitude a little bit higher. What I will do instead though is do that on the reverse direction. So I can just switch my direction to the reverse. And instead of a 65 amplitude, maybe I try a 75. That worked really well. All the parts got all the way across exactly in three seconds. If we wanted to change the frequency, we could as well do that. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna mirror what I did on the back to the front here and set the front to 75, the forward move. And then actually I can change the frequency while it's moving by hitting continuous, letting the parts run, and then I come down here really quickly and switch the frequency to see how they behave. So I could hear and see that they started to move a bit slower when I changed the frequency. So I think 66 is a good frequency. I could go higher as well, but I tested this already and 66 did seem to be optimal. So we're gonna leave it there for forward and backwards. Now, maybe we wanna try a corner move. So 
if I put all the parts in a corner quickly, I wanna see if I can get them to vibrate from this corner down to this corner. So I select this upper right cornering move here because remember this side is the hopper and I click play. Uh, notice there they just kept going because I forgot to switch from continuous to parameters. So we want to do that. We want to make sure parameter is selected. The other thing you might not be able to see in the camera is that they didn't quite hit the diagonal I wanted to. They went a little bit at this angle. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to put them back. And I can adjust the angle at which they move by just tuning it here with a little slider. And I can make sure I set this back to parameter and I can test again to see if they get there in three seconds. Now you can see that I adjusted it a little too far. So I can come back down here and, and readjust and go from there. So I'll do one more time to give the idea, but I don't think I have to get it perfect. That seemed pretty good. So it just didn't quite get there in three seconds. So I would either have to change the frequency to, to fix it, or I would have to up the duration to maybe three and a half seconds to get it there. To get them all the Pretty close. So what we can do from here then is copy all those parameters or increase the time even a little bit further if you want to really get them crammed into the corner. The idea is you want to get the time correct from corner to corner, end to end, side to side, so that the centering move later can use that information and take half of that duration to put it in the middle. So again, we can do one more here on the side. This will be the right, well, I guess technically left side move. Um, we'll start with the default parameters again and see how they cross. Pretty good, that was set at three and a half seconds. If we wanna go right and maybe add a little bit to it or instead of that, because we wanna do this as fast as possible, maybe we just bump up the amplitude to maybe try 85. Perfect, they all got over to the other side of the platform as we expected. Last two moves we can show you are the centering cross and centering long axis. So. What these two moves do is they pulse each side independently and they kind of rock the parts into the middle. So that, that's the long axis centering. And if I go over here to the cross axis centering and press play there. And that, was, that one was a bit uh, weak as you could tell. So we could change the frequency. In fact, I'll probably bump it up a bit. And then it gets too far. So you wanna find somewhere in between. And then you get a nice centering line there. So this is how we tune the IZQ to uh, get all the parts where we want them to be and then we can flip them, separate them, and detect all the ones in our correct orientation. And for this part, we're assuming a correct orientation would be one like this, where the flat side is down and the um, nub is up top. So now we can walk through a simple script or a, a sequence that we would typically see in an application. Um, if we start up top here with our hopper and we select quantity adjusted, this means if we set the duration to which the hopper uh, vibrates the part, the optimal number of parts onto the platform, in this case there's about 30 here, so let's say we want the hopper to bring 30 parts onto the platform, how long does that take? And I think in the tuning, if we recall, that took about 400 milliseconds, or was it 100? We had it set to 100. So if we would go back up here, we would set the hopper to 100. I'm gonna leave it at 150 because I think that's a little bit better for this part. Then we would go to the platform and we can do a centering move and we can say, okay, remember it took three seconds to get across. So we want that maximum value here to be three seconds. If the, if the smart sight vision detects parts over in this side of the platform, it's going to give them about a second to a second and a half to get to the middle. So it uses this information. Um, and then the last move we could just do is a little flip uh, to orient the parts and we'll set that at something like a 200. Um, finally, without any platform moves, we will just install a wait time to let the parts settle just a little bit before the image is captured so that they're all still. So if we ran something like this,
it would look something like this. All right, so now we're gonna move on to our Azicube 80 and our Azicube 50. All right, so here we have the Azicube 80, and to give you a relative size, here's my hand. So it's uh, 80 millimeters diagonally. And uh, for, for this one, we just have um, some black, small black plastic parts, and we, hard, we already have this pre-tuned, and so if, we'll hit play right here. You can see they move across the platform very easily, very quickly. And then this last one we're going to show you is the Azicube 50. And this one has a structured plate, so it's got a plate with small holes in it. Uh, here, actually, I'll just take it out and show you closer up. And we have these small uh, metal pins, and we're, we, want, we want to vibrate them so they fall, end up in the holes. And again, we already tuned this, and we'll hit play here and I'll show you. All right, so I'm going to take this out and show you again. I can do it without having the parts spill. Uh, you can see the parts are in there. Face up. 